This is Coombe Cassis Rifle TV in association with MTK Global. We're in Manchester. It's Tyson Fury's return fight week. I'm joined by Big John Fury. How are you doing, Coogan? How are you, mate? Very good, Tar. Thank you, Paul. Are you happy? Very happy. You're, you always, you're always happy, don't you? I know, because you've seen the turnout today. Biggest ever attendance for a uh, public workout. Tyson looking fabulous and sensational. Ready for Saturday night. Be there. We've spoke before and you've said that uh, you didn't believe that this point would come. Yep. Um, it has come. Yep. So that must give you uh, gr gratification, shall we say? Gratification and knowing that what my son is capable of doing is out there right now. He's going to perform. He's out to change the history of boxing. Not just to regain titles, that's a foregone conclusion. When they meet, there's only one winner, ability alone. But he's out to change the boxing, the face of boxing, and do groundbreaking stuff from here on, as you'll see Saturday night. Has had a little bit of criticism over his comeback opponent in yep. uh, Sefa Sefari. Uh, we knew that Tyson wasn't going to go in there with the likes of a Wilder or a Joshua yeah. straight away. He's been out for two and a half years, so yeah. there is some sort of leeway for that. But how do you see that? Well, I can't say that in one word. Roy Jones is the best fighter on the planet. Six weight world champion. He's not as big as Sefer Sefieri. Roy Jones is five foot ten, about twelve and a half stone. He's a lot smaller than Sefer Sefieri, and a man with his record, he's capable of beating anybody. Twenty-three wins by KO out of twenty-five contests, one loss to a world champion. Come on. People who understand boxing know Sefer Sefiri poses a threat to anybody. Tyson said before that this night on Saturday night is yep. a bigger night than the Klitschko night in Dusseldorf. How do you make that one out, though? Well, that's what he says. This Bullshit. Is... How can that work? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> this is what Tyson says. Jesus, man. I think the way he was coming from this is the... Maybe to him, but not to me. He, he, he beats a 12-year reigning champion, for God's sake. Have some sense for yourself, man. <laughs> the fact that he's got to this point, that night means he's bigger than... Well, yes, point. if you want to look at outside the boxing ring. Yeah, that's... In terms but of that, I think that's the way If you explain yourself going. correctly... All right. You know, because I'm telling he's, you now... Hang on a minute, he's your no, son. I know he's my son. He should, Listen, you should know better than anyone else. Yeah, but I'm, you, I'm telling you, because you didn't explain the question. I'm telling you now, what happened in Dusseldorf will never be... He'll never be uh, beaten, what happened there. But what he's done outside of boxing, with all the problems he's had, yeah, he's won another world title. Good luck to him. We're talking strictly boxing, not that kind of bullshit. That bullshit's gone. It's dead. We're talking about today, boxing. And Dusseldorf will never be equaled, in my book. It was a great night. Great night. We all enjoyed it. And what made it even better, the world thought he couldn't do it. He's a 10 to 1 underdog. You know what I'm saying? No chance at all. Come and done it in his own backyard. Took every belt off him when home singing. And we said it before it happened. I told you 12 months before it happened what was going to happen. Did I not? Yeah. There you have it. You actually sat down with me five days before the fight in the hotel yeah. in Dusseldorf. You explained me a story, which we won't go into, but yeah. you explained me a story yeah. of something that happened uh, a couple of years before. Yeah. And you said that this is the reason why it would happen. And it did happen. Yeah. But did that and uh, Vladimir Klitschko, I know he's having a lot to say now, but let me tell you, mate, you're a sore loser. And man up a bit, mate, you're making a fool out of your mouth. You and your brother, and your brother's a big name in your own country, but he's talking out of his arsehole, and I don't even swear. Keep that shut, mate, unless you want to get back at our train and take him on yourself. And Vlad, you're a sore loser. You're a muppet, mate, talking like that. So watch what you're saying, pal. You look stupid. They uh, labelled your son, I think it was Vitaly that labelled your son the king of trash talking. Um, oh, it worked, it worked, king of trash talking. It, was absolute, it worked on his son, did it? His brother, his brother couldn't land a blow and terrified. He'd lost his belt before he got in the ring him because the two's got no bottle. None of the pair of them. Because I'll tell you what, men with guts like that don't comment like that. On a, on a display they had, he got his ears boxed off by a man what they thought nobody could ever do anything, just a fat, ordinary jippo, and went to Germany and moved a mountain, and they can't handle that. Well, I'm telling you, you'll have to handle it, because it'll bother you now till you die in day, because you're both sore losers. And you won't get your presidency either for talking like that, because people will just think you're not for them talking like that. Vladimir Klitschko has been in the ring with Anthony Joshua and... I don't care who he's been in with. He ain't been in with Tyson Fury. He has been. His brother has. What that's we what we talking about. That's yeah. what Vladimir. Vlad, that's oh, we talking, talking about Vlad. Yeah, we're talking about Vladimir Klitschko. Yeah. It's, all right. Uh, it's been in the ring with both Joshua yeah. and your son. He gives Joshua the credit for that fight, which he also lost, but doesn't seem to give the credit to your son. Well, for, he's gonna do because he had a fifty-fifty, didn't he? My son played with him and then look a fool. So he can't big Tyson up because I tell you why he can't big Tyson up. He can't find it in his heart to be a man and say, "I got beat out of sight." 
I thought I knew everything, I thought I could beat everybody, I beat everybody, and yet I got took to school by some unknown quantity, what nobody rated, a fat man. And he can't get over that. He says Joshua this, Joshua that, because they had a 50-50. Good luck to Joshua. Joshua won the fight. Great fight, I enjoyed it. Public enjoyed it, but that, that was his level. That was his level, he never beat Tyson, never. Also, uh, Mr. Tony Bellew, who recently beat David Hay, has had a lot to say well, regarding... He's had a lot to, I don't know why he's being cheeky. Why has he been cheeky? Because I see him shake his hand. I thought he was a mate of Tyson. I know he's trying to drum a few quid up and make a fight for himself. But let me tell you, mate, why are you doing this being an idiot when you know Tyson could slap you? I don't think you could even beat me, pal. And I'm washed out, finished. You couldn't beat me, mate. So forget my son, stick to the light heavyweights on unknown cruiserweights and you'll be all right. You beat David A was 100 years old. Forget about that, mate. You can't beat Tyson Fury. So stop even mentioning his name. Honestly, that's all I'm saying about him. You know what I'm saying? And I'll back up what I say. You know, I'm there as large as life. You know, I'm telling the truth. I won't back down from what I say from no man or kiss no man's ass. Me ever. That's the top and the end of it. John, to be fair, Tyson has mentioned Tony's name and vice versa. They've both mentioned each other's name, especially over the last sort of month or so. Is that a possibility that you could even see that fight happening? Or Why when he wouldn't stand the prayer? How? What was he going to do? You know, I'll tell you now. Tony Bellew, Sefa Safiri knock him spark out. That's what happened there. So I don't know why they're even mentioning Tyson. You know, and I'm only being like this because I respected him, bigged him up, and I've got a lot of friends in Liverpool. I worked at Liverpool for 10 years, know everybody in there. But why make an ass out your mouth? To get a few quid. The lad's done well. Very well. He's won a world title. He's beat David A. Yes, he was shot, worn 300,000 miles on the clock, but he still beat him. But why mention young, super heavyweight dinosaurs when you're only really 12 stone seven? Come on. The joke's on him for even mentioning Tyson like that. You know what I'm saying? But I've said what I've said, and I'm not going nowhere. He knows me. Everybody in Liverpool knows me. They know how game I am. You know what I'm saying? So that's it. How long, how many fights before Tyson, in your opinion, is not ready physically, but just the process of coming back before he's in with the likes of Joshua and Wilder, etc.? I'm tired of answering these questions about AJ. Tyson could beat him now. Tyson could beat him now. Because there's no competition. It's not about when Tyson if this and if that. That's a foregone conclusion. Tyson can beat AJ in his sleep. That man's a, a good fighter. He's an excellent fighter. This is a brilliant fighter. The two levels apart, mate. You know, like the aliens are light years in front of us in brain power. That's how my son is in front of Joshua in ability. Do you understand me now, what I'm saying? Do I get the picture across? He can't do it. He's got slow feet. He's got a few flash stands. He goes like that. One, two, left up. Chin stuck in the air. You see him, he's blown out of his ass. I mean, he gets a bit of pressure put on him. Tyson will do more than pressurise him, mate. He'll be crying after four rounds. Tears will be rolling out of his eyes like Mara Fat Peas. But he can't do any good. He'll be swinging like that. Oh, where's he gone? Pop, pop, bang. On the floor. End of. Give me them belts back where you stole them. You bum. And that's it. <laughs> will we see this fight next year, in your opinion? No, I don't think he will, because he's too frightened. He'll retire before he faces Tyson Fury. The Gypsy King will retire him without even fighting him, and I've said it first. He'll retire him without even fighting him, because he hasn't got nothing to beat him with. He don't need money. The lad's a trillionaire. He don't need it. So why would you mucky your legacy by letting a big Gypo spark you right out? End of. Do you answer all them questions? That's what it is. The Gippo will spark him out because he got no tip back with. It's like you fighting with a water pistol and I've got a shotgun. That's what it's about. You know what I'm saying? Ridiculous. He can't win. Neither can the other one. Like Tyson said, a football player and a weightlifter. I'd be more of a match for them than me. <laughs> I didn't know people were watching this. Um, but anyway. <laughs> Regardless of all that, yeah. Tyson's got a job to do this Saturday Got a night. job to do, can't take his eye off the ball. Sefer Safiri's come here with a reason and an intention. He's come here to change the world itself, change Albania. And I tell you what, stranger things have happened in boxing. You cannot underestimate anybody in this game. 23 knockouts out of 25 fights, one loss to a world champion, Manuel Char. How can you write him off? Any boxing pundit with a brain knows he poses a threat to anybody. And little men can run up you like rats and stick it on you. 
because they've got the speed, the agility, and I'll tell you what it is, he's there, he's 16 stone, whatever height he is, Mike Tyson was 5 foot 9, only as big as him, Mike Tyson changed the world, 5 foot 9 and 15 stone, so how can you write him off? And like I said about Roy Jones, 5 foot 11, come off, he used to be a welterweight, beat John Lewis, took the heavyweight title, and five other world titles with it, don't underestimate anybody, the, the boxers, the professional men, and the Albanians, you know what they are, don't you? They're tough as teak, and they've got a will of iron. And he poses a threat to anybody. Believe me, we know Tyson will beat him. I'd be surprised if he doesn't, but I'll tell you what it is. Nothing's a foregone conclusion. Nothing in boxing. Anybody will tell you that. No, just ask the people that backed against your son against Klitschko. Listen, and well they should. But at the end of the day, I want all them to eat their words you backed against my son. But let me tell you, things happen for a reason in this world. It's come round nice and slow, and now they've really seen who the real champion is, Tyson. And now he's getting the respect of the public he deserves. It's been long crazy for look at him today, biggest ever turnout there in Manchester for a public workout. Because they know he's the people's champion, he says it how it is, he mixes with the public. You know, he's not afraid to go and have a cup of tea or sit down with anybody. He'll sit down there with them and embrace them, advise them, help them. I bet nobody else is doing that. You know why? Because they're reading a the frigging script, aren't they? You tell, you do this, you do that. You say this, you say that. Nobody can say that. I'm his father and I can't tell my son what to say. Because he'd just tell to me, he'd say to me, you take a back seat. It's none of your business. He knows what he's doing, Tyson. He's a people's champion, that's all he wants to do. He's won the people's hearts and he just wants to put a good display on for them and let them enjoy the true heavyweight lineal champion of the world. He's the fastest heavyweight in the world. He's the biggest heavyweight in the world. And he's the strongest heavyweight in the world. Ask Steve Cunningham. He'll verify what I'm saying. One more from me, John. Yep. Do you think this time round the media will have a different stance on how they portray your son? I'm having no comment on media situations at all, Ragugan. I don't know anything about the media, don't know anything about politics, I don't even want to talk about that. Move on, please. That was it for me, unless you have thank anything Thank you very much, Coogan. Lovely. No, that's it. I've said enough, Anna. <laughs> John, thank you very much for giving us thank your you, time. Thank you, Coogan. I'm sure we'll catch up with you this week. Cracking job, mate. Top man.